The basic idea behind the theory of evolution by natural selection is this. If you get eaten, or otherwise die, before you've had the chance to reproduce, then your genes, or traits, don't get passed on. It's a dead end. But if you survive long enough to reproduce, some of your traits get passed down to a new generation. Maybe you were just a bit faster than the other wildebeest. Maybe your coloration gave you better camouflage than some of the rest. Who knows? It could be a ton of things. The point is, over time, these little changes in the proportion of traits will add up to big changes. Maybe even entirely new species. There's a misconception out there, though. It's related to this idea called survival of the fittest. That evolution works through the survival of the strongest, fastest, toughest, meanest of the bunch, and that things get stronger, faster, tougher, and meaner over time. Thing is, that's just not true. Problematic associations aside, that idea doesn't explain the persistence of seemingly useless traits, or the loss of seemingly useful ones or traits that simply don't change for millions of years at a time. Sometimes things persist simply because there's no pressure for them not to. Sometimes things just work. In the case of sponges, there's the demo model. I'm Devin Boker, you're listening to Class. Between 75% and 90% of all sponges, nearly 8,000 species by some estimates, belong to the demo sponges, the most diverse class within the entire phylum. Unsurprisingly, this diversity in appearance and color is matched by their diversity of range and habitat. Most are marine, but one order, the spongilida, they live in freshwater. You might spot some walking along a beach or diving in the intertidal zone. Deep sea submersibles have recorded them in the dark abyss. From the tropics to the poles, demo sponges have laid root across the planet. The diversity of the demos is hard to justly express. Their asymmetrical bodies range from just a few millimeters to an excess of six feet across. In fact, All of the largest sponges are demos. They can form thin lichen-like layers of crust over vast surfaces, finger-like protrusions, or vase shapes. Pigment granules within their amoebocytes are to thank for their often Seussian coloration. Sunflower yellows, poppy reds, fluorescent greens, oranges rivaling those of a flame bower bird, and purples that would make wines look pale in comparison. Their soft bodies cover hard skeletons made of one to four rayed spicules, made of silica, spongin, or both, shaped most commonly according to the leuconoid structure. Most demo sponges, like their glass cousins, are incredibly long-lived, living lives of 500 to 1,000 years. Their stationary nature in combination with their lengthy lifespans and dense layered skeletons like the rings of a tree make them ideal chronological, climatological cartographers, mapping and storing data about our planet's past. Sponges may be a simple organism, but if there's anything that they embody, it's the spirit of persistence. That is all for this episode of Class, and marks midway on season one. Periphera. Next time, we talk about Calcaria, and after, Homo scleromorpha. Thank you for listening, and if you'd like to support this show and the creation of the educational resources that go along with this series, you can find more information at patreon.com slash thewildlife. The link is in the description. Peace out, Rainbow Trout. <laughs>